Look, I think the, the decision by the Fed to taper had been fairly well telegraphed. There was a little bit of uncertainty about the magnitude and the timing uh, of taper, but I think as we see Bernanke transition uh, to Yellen and the uh, clear afford guidance from the US Federal Reserve, uh, the outlook will probably switch away from uh, the actual tapering, which is more marginal, and towards when the Fed will actually consider uh, normalising monetary policy via raising the Fed funds rate. And I think as long as the Fed signals that that actual decision to move the Fed funds rate is well in the distant future, uh, then markets, particularly in the emerging markets in Asia, should be able to absorb uh, tapering uh, and the signals of a continued period of easy uh, US monetary policy quite well. Ultimately, taper uh, as the first chapter of normalization of US monetary policy settings should be dollar positive. Uh, and we would be expecting the US dollar to probably be on a multi-year uh, strengthening path from here. Certainly as liquidity has been uh, repriced and redistributed in the global economy, uh, we would expect that to be dollar positive. I think one of the challenges for the Fed will be on interest rates, uh, particularly US Treasury yields. Uh, one of the key uncertainties on whether taper would start was whether the US economy could actually withstand higher interest rates, given the very important role the US housing sector is playing in this recovery thus far. So I think uh, as long as we have the forward guidance from the Fed that the actual hikes in the Fed funds rate are probably going to be a 2015, 2016 story, that should provide a strong nominal anchor for US Treasury yields. So I think where we're likely to see the movement is perhaps in the dollar, I don't think we're going to see any significant upside in US Treasury yields unless we see the economic data start to significantly surprise to the upside. What we have to remember with the uh, periods of capital flow volatility we saw over the course of 2013 was it was occurring at a time when both the growth and interest rate differentials appeared to be skewing overwhelmingly in favour of the US. And historically, capital flows have always been determined by growth and interest rate differentials. And in May and June, when Ben Bernanke first put the idea of taper out there, uh, it was when the Chinese economy was slowing uh, and there were risks of a, a more generalised emerging Asia slowdown. Uh, the US recovery looked quite strong at that time and US Treasury yields were picking up uh, in line with that. Uh, so the growth and in interest rate differentials were skewing more in favour of the old world. What we're seeing now as the Fed has commenced taper uh, is the US, uh, or the Chinese economy I should say, appears to have stabilised around the 7.5% mark. Uh, we're also starting to see a rise in yields uh, in the emerging markets as some liquidity flows out. So I think the overall growth and in interest rate differential spread is once again more favourable uh, for the emerging markets. And I think with China as a linchpin for a lot of the cyclicality in the emerging markets, 2014 looks to be a relatively good year there. So. Markets appear to be quite well positioned uh, for taper. It was something they were expecting. And I don't expect there to be the disorderly capital flows that we saw in 2013 repeated over 2014. But for Asia and India in particular, I think the key is going to be the current account deficit. Uh, and we've seen fairly sizable moves in uh, narrowing current account deficits in both India and Indonesia. And that suggests that the role of the currencies uh, for India and Indonesia in terms of making exports cheaper and imports uh, more expensive and continuing to stabilise the current account deficit, there's probably less of a role for currency weakness to play over 2014.